in terms of fashion designers specifically, I do definitely believe that technology is a tool to help them distribute their ideas and creations globally. So the goals in Qatar are shared by organizations across the ecosystem. By 2030, we'd like $100 billion in foreign direct investment. It's an ambitious target, but I, I, I think we're up to it. Hello, welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Adil Halim. On this episode, we look at how technology is changing the game in business and fashion. Laila Humaira visits Qatar's leading tech hub, driving innovation by supporting startups. But first, I'm at M7 in Mesherab for the TEFA conference, which stands for Technology, Education, Finance, Fashion and Art, to see how fashion meets tech. Could this be the future of fashion? Augmented reality runway shows. Digital artist Ramira Alban uses AR technology to create multi-dimensional experiences, so art is not just observed, but experienced. Me gusta mucho el tema de la tecnología. Me gusta también conectar con la naturaleza. Creo que fue la búsqueda de unir estos dos estilos. Creo que la prenda de ropa sigue evolucionando, así como el arte ha evolucionado de de una pieza estática a llevarla a una pieza con movimiento que pueda transmitir lo que el creador eh, quiere que la gente conozca. For the runway show, Ramiro collaborated with renowned fashion designer Deborah Sawaf's The Power of Words by interpreting the brand's seven spirit animals and bringing them to life. I'm hoping that through fashion we can create change. Part of that change also involved organizing a workshop around the Power of Words mission to raise mental health awareness and empowerment. So what we did is create a program where people can actually understand the emotions of each other because it's seven words and seven emotions. And you use the emotions in, in both ways. You express your emotion or you ask for an emotion. So you can be reminding yourself to be compassionate or you can be asking for compassion. The brand also partnered with Los Angeles-based digital artist Logic on a live painting exercise. The former creative director at Google says he aspires to inspire. So this particular piece is featuring my two characters called Good and Evil, G-U-D and Evil, E-V-O-L, which is like love backwards. Both of these entities both harbor the, uh, the halo and the horn. The reason why I do that is because no one is totally one thing, no one is totally good, no one is totally evil. Artistic freedom was a major theme of the three-day TEFA conference hosted by the Doha Design District an innovation hub supporting creatives in downtown Mesherab. Then there's also art and how technology is impacting art and how it's changing the landscape for artists and artwork alike, especially with the use of NFT, which protects you know, the IP rights for the artists. So it's a very important step um, for creatives. One of the highlights of this year's TEFA event is the Middle East's first ever Fashathon, which is a hackathon for fashion. It's a way for designers to use AI to create their own 3D fashion pieces, either from existing templates or by using their own imported designs. Nitin Sharma believes fashion is an old and outdated industry that has not yet been disrupted. So he co-founded a tech company with the hopes of democratizing digital fashion. Fashathon is designers who want to showcase their creations, who want to contribute their templates to earn royalties, and it is aspiring non-fashion designers who are creating templates using artificial intelligence. That said, these people have never been trained formally in fashion, but they are creative people, and now with artificial intelligence coming, they kind of become a fashion designer. Back on the runway, Ramiro believes adding tech to art can bring even more people and groups together. I think the art is what communicates to everyone. It's the language universal. I don't speak English, but my art transmits everything. As Qatar positions itself as a regional hub for innovation, the country is making significant investments to reshape and diversify its economic landscape. I got a chance to sit down with Invest Qatar's Fahad Al Khwari to learn more about the investment promotion agency's initiatives to spearhead entrepreneurship and innovation within the region. Fahad, earlier this year, the country's tech sector took center stage at Web Summit Qatar. That was when the $1 billion investment was announced, revolutionizing the startup ecosystem. How significant was that moment 
to say Qatar is open for business. What it signaled was our seriousness about the whole tech sector. We've always been, we've been digitizing our economy for the past 10 to 15 years. We've been doing that with foreign corporations as partners. We've been serviced by them and we have serviced them in order to do so. Microsoft has been a big partner and there's been other large partners as well. But what we've done here is we've opened up the space for small to medium sized enterprises to actually participate in our digitization. The best way to do that is to incentivize them. Startup Qatar offers $500,000 for startups that want to commence their journey in Qatar and then up to 5 million for those that want to scale up using Qatar. And all that signals is that we're serious about all sizes of companies and we're very serious about digitizing our own economy. You just mentioned Microsoft. Google and Tesla have also recently opened operations here in Qatar. What does that tell you about the country becoming the tech hub of the Middle East? So I think rather than look at it as uh, us becoming a tech hub, I think what you should look at is how responsive we are to change. Because for companies like Google, Microsoft and Tesla to land anywhere, not only Qatar, you need to have laws concerning data that are that are up to date, that are uh, that protect the, the the data of the consumer, but also help the business grow. Tesla themselves will tell you that they're a data company rather than they are a, a, a automotive company. So hopefully what the presence of these big companies signals is, is our seriousness to make sure that the landing is safe and that it's sustainable because we're after long-term partnerships. We're not after short-term stays. Now you're taking that message on the road. I caught up with you in Toronto at Collision 2024. What's the message you're trying to convey to businesses looking to put their footprint in the region? The message is that we're open for business. The best we can do is convey what the value proposition is, tell them what opportunities are available, showcase our incumbent market, but also it's important to have a regional view when you do business in this region. The MENA region comprises of over 20 countries. There's around $8.5 trillion in combined GDP within six hours flying time. So Southeast Asia, North Africa, Central Asia, and so on. And all we're doing is we're facilitating access to these markets through Qatar. That's, that's the end goal. Also at Collision, you mentioned there's 300,000 locals, approximately, with an infrastructure for 5 million people. So how do you hope to meet that goal? So as a result of the last decade of building the country and the World Cup, we have a, an infrastructure that can house around 5 million people, just over 300,000 locals, and just over 2 million in terms of population total. So we could double in size tomorrow. The way we want to do that is to fill the rest of the infrastructure with the right kind of talent so that we create ecosystems that function on their own. And then hopefully what that does is it contributes to a knowledge-based economy. Uh, and it also hopefully inspires our own to disrupt and create their own startups and compete. Now, one of the entities Invest Qatar is collaborating with is the Qatar Science and Technology Park, the tech hub that is leading the country's economic diversification through innovation. QSTP provides a launch pad for startups aspiring to take their product from idea to reality. Lila Humaira takes a closer look at how that strong support is giving wings for one company to fly high. This is what it feels like to walk through an airport that's been voted one of the best in the world. Everything just runs so seamlessly at Qatar's Hamad International Airport. But behind all the systems working as they should is an AI-powered machine. One of the pioneers of this application is a software developed by Emma Systems. One of the biggest liabilities for the airline industry is flight delays, which costs an estimated $33 billion a year. By using algorithms and real-time data, Emma Systems is helping to reduce that cost by optimizing efficiency and enhancing safety. Beyond adding this level of complete visibility across all the people on the ground and, and the air traffic control, we also add a level of uh, predictability through machine learning and AI to certain elements, like trying to help the decision makers on the ground uh, at the airport better foresee what could possibly happen. From innovation programs to a tech incubation center to direct funding, the support from QSDP has helped Emma Systems develop its AI-powered platform to ensure the smooth running of airports all over Europe. Startups like Emma Systems is just one of many companies incubated at QSTP, headed by Dr. Jack Lau, who wants to go further than just providing a launch pad. The new era, of course we do have the funding opportunities, but it's more important that you actually sit down with the aspiring occupants of this QSTP and find out what you can offer them. 
Emma Systems has attracted the attention of venture capital firm Golden Gate Ventures. Founded by Silicon Valley natives, the firm launched Qatar's first international VC fund in May. It is going to be impactful for founders that we are going to be backing and investing in. Uh, we're going to be supporting the ecosystem with, of course, the other local VCs on the ground. We are going to be doing events for the startup community. The $100 million Mina One Fund is backed by major Qatari investors, including Alcor Holding, Alatia Group, and Qatar Financial Center. If you look at Qatar itself, it has come a very long way in terms of being hospitable to venture firms like ourselves, but also to founders, to the fintech community, and then I think a very supportive ecosystem in terms of the government. 2024 is proving to be a landmark year for Qatar's startup scene, with more VC players entering the field, like Qatari VC firm Rasmal Ventures, which also revealed its first homegrown $100 million fund. We're seeing more and more creative and, and innovators that are daring to, to, to think differently and wanting to be part of creating things from scratch from their home ground. And while it's still early days for Qatar's startup industry, stronger collaboration and strategic partnerships are the fuel that will help boost growth. Venture capital is a proximity profession. And so when we see people seeing the strategic value of Qatar, we can only be smart money for them and excited to help, excited to open doors in Qatar and in the region and rise all of us together. From hosting innovative fashion shows to becoming a launch pad for tech startups, it's clear Qatar is prioritizing its investments by embracing its future and diversifying its economy. Now that's all the time we have for now, but we hope you enjoyed this episode. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.